So I am leaving Seattle on my flight to Honolulu on a very foggy day out of Seattle. I'm excited about this trip because I will be on the 737 MAX 9 flying first class. I'm really looking forward to reviewing this flight and enjoying the trip back home. A chilly walk across the sky bridge after being dropped off by my Uber ride. I checked out the ticketing and check-in area and was glad I checked in online and only had a carry-on. Just too hectic for me. So off I was to the TSA checkpoint. Remind me to get a pair of plastic reading glasses and a non-metal belt buckle. The glasses were hanging from my shirt and since I usually only pat down my pockets, not my sternum where my glasses were hanging from my shirt, I made TSA work a bit harder today. Rookie traveler status. Alaska Airlines has three lounges here, and I just did a video last week where I took a look at each one. The link is below in the description so you can check it out later. I spent most of my time in the lounge at the North Satellite since my flight was out of gate N10 today. Now you can get entry to the Alaska lounges when traveling on a paid first class or a first class award ticket if the flight's operated by Alaska Airlines and the flight has a distance of at least 2100 miles obviously seattle to honolulu cleared that mileage cap however i was using an upgrade certificate so my ticket fare class was the letter u which means that i did not have access to the alaska lounge even though i was in first class Fortunately, though, I have an American Airlines Admirals Club membership, which got me access to the Alaska lounges regardless of cabin selection. I did get a chance also to spend some time in the central terminal area here to watch a foggy airport runway out the window. A beautiful view. I really love this setup that they have where you can sit in a rocking chair and watch the planes take off from the windows. I had the chance to see a Singapore A350, a few Delta aircraft, and of course, multiple Alaska Airlines uh, aircraft arriving and departing from this vantage point. I also got to see the delivery of an Alaska uh, livery honoring those who have served. The wingtips with the American flag design was pretty sweet. I think if you had a cup of coffee in a few hours here, it would be the perfect afternoon. Check out the fall curl across the wing on that Singapore Airlines aircraft. So after grabbing some great clam chowder and a margarita at the Alaska Lounge, I headed down to gate N10 for my flight to Honolulu. I was on flight 853, departing at 3.35 p.m. On this flight, I was in seat C2, and the flight attendant offered me a water, a pog, or a pog mosa. So I went with a Pogmosa, of course, served in a paper cup, which is standard for pre-flight servings. The fog was clearing up a bit on this flight out to Honolulu. A little bit of haze still hanging on the runway, but the sky above was blue and clear. I couldn't wait for the views to come. We pulled back from the gate on time, but for some reason we didn't head out to the runway until about 3 46. We passed a Star Wars livery on an Alaskan plane that was pretty cool and the takeoff from Seattle was absolutely breathtaking with the low-hanging fog over the city. Let's take a moment and enjoy this takeoff. Once we cleared the cloud line, the views were just amazing, and the majestic Mount Rainier came into view in the distance. You couldn't ask for anything more Seattle than this. I 
I was looking forward to some sunset views as we chased the sun on our way to Honolulu, and I was not disappointed. The seats in the front of the plane on this aircraft are a standard domestic first class setup. Nice and roomy. Uh, the seat, it was comfortable. If you're going to cross the Pacific to Hawaii, this is the way to do it. Other than that, classic storage up front, a footrest that dropped down. I could have used a few more inches to totally stretch out at six foot two, but I'm not complaining. There were some compartments on the side, the US. B chargers and the regular AC outlet as well. The tray table is located in the armrest that pops out nice and roomy and I did use it often on this flight. The first thing that I used this tray table for is when they came around and asked for a pre-meal beverage. I ordered the straightaway margarita to give it a try. I normally just drink water, ginger ale, or coffee on flights, but they did have some decent beer options as well. Not much in the way of wine. I was happy to see the fat tire ale on the menu. Brought back some Colorado memories for me. Has anyone tried the Crater Lake Hazelnut Espresso Vodka? Just asking, just wondering. Let me know in the comments if you have. So the margarita was definitely strong and had a decent taste, albeit too bitter for me. When my meal came out, I switched out my margarita for the Stumptown coffee. They say it's especially crafted to be enjoyed at 30,000 feet. I had pre-ordered my meal for this flight and I chose the Calbee, which came with some rice, a Calbee sauce, a grilled pepper, a grilled bok choy, and a sun-dried tomato dish that I believe had a dollop of this ricotta cheese. Two pieces of sourdough bread on the side. The cow bee was fork tender. You really don't need a knife to cut it. So if you're a local from Hawaii like me, be prepared for a different tasting type of cow bee. This is not the on the bone and charred from the grill cow bee. More of a pot roast with a light cow bee seasoning on it. I did dip it in the sauce, which really perked up the flavor a lot more. It was a wonderfully tender piece of beef with a delicate cowbie taste to it, and I would definitely order this again. If you enjoy this dish while flying Alaska, the next time you're in Hawaii, any island, head to a barbecue shop and order the cowbie. I think you will absolutely love it. It is a popular dish among locals here. The rice had a seasoning to it and went well with the kalbi. The roasted pepper was delicious, cooked perfectly. The choy sum was also tasty and cooked well. This dish here, this sun-dried tomatoes with a dollop of cheese was wonderful. The vinegar seasoning, really uh, a nice palate kick to it. The bread looked boring, but it was soft and fresh as well. I sure don't miss rock hard rolls. Overall, a good meal. I would definitely go with the kalbi again. Others have recommended the salmon with the fried rice. I feel like ordering a fish dish on an airplane is pushing the limits on smells. What do you guys think? Have you ordered the salmon or sat next to someone who has? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. After the meal, I took in some more views as the sunset painted some colors on the clouds below. I took a stroll through the cabin also to see the back of the plane and how the seating and the layout was. Once back in my seat, I pulled out my laptop to log in, check the Wi-Fi and some of the entertainment options. There was a good selection of movies, but no games. I could not find any games. I enjoy puzzle games and shooting aliens when I fly. It helps me pass the time, but I guess not on this particular trip. When I logged in my, via my phone, I was given the option for free in-flight texting. I can text from my laptop as well, but I couldn't get that option on the screen, so it must be a mobile device activated. There was also an option for, uh, on mobile for free Wi-Fi for T-Mobile customers. It's like an $8 savings, so you can consider that as well. For dessert, we got a cheesecake. It was very good, creamy and thick. It wasn't juniors from New York thick, but still darn good at 30,000 feet. About an hour later, the flight attendant came around with the snack basket. Snacks were offered were uh, coconut-covered cashews, kind bars, potato chips, and popcorn. 
I went with the potato chips. The potato chips I picked was the avocado oil with sea salt. These were the worst chips I've had in a long, long while. Get something else if you have the chance from the snack basket. As we approached for the landing, the ride got extra bumpy. The weather forecast for Honolulu was windy and we were definitely feeling it. Pulling into gate E2 that night and I was glad to be home after the Seattle trip. I enjoyed this flight and the meal quite a bit. I look forward to flying with Alaska again. I have several more trips planned, so follow along. If I don't see you in a lounge, I'll see you in the lobby. <laughs>